I don't think everyone is familiar with deterministic versus probabilistic computing. So if you could just break that down for the, the layman, I think that'll help people understand the rest of our conversation. Absolutely, better. absolutely. So so computers, they're in a deterministic state. You know, you have a bunch of transistors, they're zeros and ones, mm -hmm. uh, and they're, they're definitely not uh, in a state that you don't know because if, if you don't know the state of your computer, it crashes in, in current architectures, essentially. You get a blue screen, it's over. And then, you know, I came from a different world originally from, from quantum computing where there it, we're using quantum physics, which is like superpositions and you have any noise there, it, it crashes, same thing, right? So it, it seemed to me like, okay, well to scale quantum or scale deterministic computers, the bane of our existence is noise. So randomness, just from the jitter of matter, of electrons, of radiation, whatever it is, sources of noise come in, seep into your system and add entropy. They add uncertainty as to the state of the, the computer. And that's usually a problem, but if you if you use the uncertainty and you shape it, that's actually the algorithm we're trying to run in machine learning. You're just trying to shape uncertainty uh, into a blob that is the same shape as the data set blob, and, and that is machine learning. And so uh, that's what we've been doing using essentially the, the natural jitter of electrons that occurs at very uh, low current. Because if you have very few electrons, then whether a handful of them are or oscillating does matter to the population average, right? So you could think of it as a, a mosh pit of electrons and we're kind of steering it, right? And, and, and that's, that's kind of the art, that's the, that's the very real challenge there. And uh, you know, we're creating software and compilers to compile well-known textbook algorithms onto, onto the physics of this device, onto the physics of this mosh pit of electrons. Okay, so deterministic compute, everyone knows, is what we use today. Yeah. Quantum computing, everyone knows that we're working on it. Yeah. All the majors are. You worked on this at Alphabet. I know yeah. Microsoft, Amazon, everyone's working on quantum. Super low temperatures and an entirely different set of problems. But in between those is where you guys seem to exist. And so I think it might be time to bring up um, energy-based models and how those tie to the underlying uh, structure of, of neural nets and other AI techniques that matter. So talk to us about that. And then I want to get from there into uh, production. Yeah, for sure. So energy-based models are both very old and cutting edge at the same time. There's kind of uh, some founding fathers of, of of deep learning and AI that are big fans of them. Uh, Yann LeCun, uh has an active working group and uh, working on energy-based models at Meta. Uh, but originally they're, you know, back propagation the uh, algorithm we use to train neural networks came from Jeffrey Hinton, who was working on how to train networks of these energy-based models. Mm -hmm. And if you look at averages of energy-based models, averages of their input inputs and outputs, because naturally they're, they're more of a distribution, they're a probability distribution over outputs. Yes. But if you just look at the average, then that's how we actually got neural networks. And then if we looked at how to train you know, net, deep networks of, of, of these energy-based models using the averages, that, that's how backpropagation came about. So in a way, we're going back to the ancestors of deep neural networks and running them natively in hardware, right? And, and, and that, that, that's, that's pretty awesome from a, a theory standpoint. But uh, at, at the same time, uh, you know, the energy-based models have been known to be far more parameter efficient, again, because you, you kind of have to uh, use more test time compute to use them. Uh, mm -hmm. Traditionally, sometimes people didn't want to throw more compute at, at test time to actually use them. Um, but um, if you do, then you theoretically uh, have the most parameter efficient model and hence data efficient. Because the more parameters that you have, the more you got to chisel away uh, using gradient descent. So you need more hits of the chisel, which is uh, data points every time, right? So unlocking the ability to run energy-based models scalably and tractably uh, is, is, is what we're working on. And, and that's going to unlock these models that are more data efficient, more parameter efficient. They use far more compute. But if compute is 10,000 X cheaper for us in terms then of... Then why do we care? Why exactly. not just use 100,000 X, you know, 10 exactly. million X? Exactly, right? And so so we've been not only working on the hardware, but we've also been working on on the algorithms in order to, to uh, you know... Uh, <laughs> get people to use more energy-based models, right? So yeah. how to uh, modify diffusion models uh, to use more energy-based models is some research we've been doing, for example.